So you know those books you make in elementary school that you write as a class? Some publishing company makes them into a real book so your family can buy copies? Well, when I was in the fourth grade, we were assigned to write and illustrate a short story that we would make into a book. Now, I'm pretty sure most people wrote stories about normal things. Their dog or their friends. But I wrote a story that had the title of, I need to move to a different family. I don't know for sure, but I bet this title made my mom very sad. Here's what the cover looks like. Look at me, I'm such a cutie. Anyway, time to get into the juicy stuff. Here's the story. At school. Okay class, time for recess teacher announced. Side note, the teacher doesn't ban the class from using the word said in any of her writings. That's why there's a lot of not so awkward ex- uh, sayings. Steven, Gabriel ex- said, where's Noah? Gabriel and Noah are actual people I know in school. Noah moved to middle school, so we watched Lost Touch. But me and Gabriel are still friends. He is not here. Life is different without Noah, Stephen said. Noah, if you're watching this, I am so sorry. Is that Noah over there? Boy, is he late. Noah, Gabriel said. I don't know why I made all my friends talk like robots, but Noah says, Hi guys, I had a dentist appointment. That is why I am so late. Steven, did you get my invitation? Yeah, Steven answered. Can you come? Noah asked. No, Steven answered. Why not? Noah asked. The reporter is coming in, so we have to clean up the house. And my mom is going to be on TV at 12 o'clock midnight. My favorite part of this story is the fact that I never say why my mom is going to be on TV. But if she's not letting me go to a friend's birthday party so I can clean the house, then she is probably doing something illegal. Who would want to stay awake for that long just for that? And my dear friend Noah suggests you could run away. Like, I don't even run away to the birthday party. I just run away in the middle of the night. I think I will, Stephen smiled. 11 a.m., time to go, I'm at p.m. But if I go out the door, the alarm will go. The escape ladder, Stephen said. Stephen went down the ladder and hid behind the bush. End of page one. I'm going to skip ahead of it because it's more of me talking to myself. But basically, I got hungry. I packed in some Crave cereal in my backpack, find a $1 bill, and decided to take the bus there. Where is that bus? Steven said. Finally, the bus is here. Steven said with relief. Didn't say anything. Sorry, kid. Your parents are around. The bus driver said, "She's a lamb, right?" Bus driver didn't say anything either. I'm eleven years old, Steve said. It's actually nine when I wrote this. Apparently, being eleven means you're all big and tough, and you can ride buses by yourself. <laughs> so I go home, sleep, and in the morning I hear my dad say. It's too bad your interview on the news was cancelled. So I get excited that my mom's interview got cancelled. And I can go to Noah's birthday party. But then I scream, ow, in pain for some reason. And I'm in pain. And I say, I am going to be on my bed. So I'm on my bed. And I rip up the dollar bill I found because I think it's unlucky. So I call my dad, who in this story is a doctor, and he says, 
Okay, so does this hurt? Yeah, James answered. Oh no, Dad said. What? Eh, nine eyes, zzz, eight S's, then a space, and then three Z's. And let's pause this, and I'm glad that I use a semicolon in the right place. And also, my dad is able to diagnose me by only asking if something hurts. Now, I don't know how real doctors diagnose people, but I'm pretty sure it's not like that. And then I write, James Stevens said as he fell asleep. Abbott's neck is such a big plot twist, I bet none of you saw it coming. As I lay on my bed unconscious, my dad says, Kidney failure. That is followed by four frowny face emoticons and parentheses. Can't believe that my nine year old mind somehow knew what kidney failure was. Where did I learn this? Later at the hospital, he had an operation. He lost both of his kidneys, the nurse exclaimed. I'll donate a kidney, Steven's girlfriend explained. We're almost done, guys. Then I think to myself, kidney, kidney, kidney. Those words just repeated and repeated in his mind. Steven could not believe his ears. His girlfriend, in parentheses, the member in school, close parentheses, liked him. Okay, so this story just turned somewhat heartwarming. I wonder what I'll say next. After the operation, Steven and his girlfriend had trouble going to the bathroom. Yeah, how? I mean, why did I have a hard time with the urinal? Okay, last sentence. Stephen found out how much his family cared for him. I think your family cares for you, too. Actually, I remember that line. Yeah, my teacher made me write that in. Okay, ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 